getting capped for Wales at 19 is pretty impressive, especially when you're studying for a uni degree and playing for the Exeter Chiefs. But for Welsh lock Chris Chunza, well, his inspirational story started at six years old, a refugee from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He and his family fled to Wales, the youngest of five children, and none of them could speak a shred of the English language. It was actually at 15 years old when rugby discovered him, and with his size, height and athleticism, he probably could have turned his hand to a number of different sports. So why rugby? Well, I'm here in a very wet, rainy Exeter to find out a little bit more. Well, we were meant to be sitting outside, lovely sunny afternoon in Exeter with some famous Devonshire cream teas. And it's just not very nice out here, is it, unfortunately? Hopefully we'll have a good chat. Let's start with your fairy tale story. You know, you've come from real life hardships to some great successes. And you know, your, your career as an international senior hasn't even really started, to be totally honest with you. Um, can we go back to the very beginning in, uh, in Kinjaza? What was that like there? What memories do you have? No definitive memory. It's weird. Yeah. It's almost like a, a fuzzy dream, obviously because I was so young. Yeah. Main memories of like going to school, playing outside the yard with like um, neighbours, etc. Sure. Just like kicking a ball around. Everyone there, everyone in my area loved football. Yeah. So those are like the main memories I had. 2010, wasn't it, when you came uh, yeah, over? Yeah, around 2009, yeah. 2009, yeah. 2010. 2000, yeah. Do you, rem do you remember f fleeing? Was it as dramatic no, as that? No, no, it definitely wasn't dramatic. No. Um, my parents were very diligent to make sure we did everything the right way. Yeah. Um, it was a process that took probably, I think, a whole year. So I think they started the whole process probably in like 2000. Seven, two thousand eight. Yeah. You know, make sure there was a smooth transition, mm -hmm. etc. And then you go into school or trying to make friends and yeah. having that language barrier. Yeah. So this is this is where I almost started playing sport in a in a more diligent way because when I was in school, I haven't got a clue what was yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. Children would be getting like maths homework and stuff, and I'd be getting days of the week, and the, oh. the bell would go. We'd go out and play. And yeah. And I understood that the playtime was actually the only time I'd get to somehow relate to my friends or try and make friends. So that's when I, I started actually taking interest in sport. Had you have heard of rugby at all? No idea what rugby was. Really? Genuinely no idea what rugby was. Even when I came here yeah. up until the age of, up until I went to high school, I didn't really know what yeah. rugby was. <laughs> Even like when I tried to, when I started playing the sport early on mm. and I tried to explain to my parents the sport and I showed it to them. Like imagine what a mother would see about rugby, a sport they never even heard or seen before. <laughs> she just lost, she was like, no, no, no you're not yeah. playing this. Yeah. <laughs> how influential is, is she and, and your family, your sisters in your career and how much credit will, will you give them for, for your character? I would give a lot to my mum. She was a very organized person, very well grounded. She knew what she had to do again, five kids, tough, tough to raise in, in a country like this with not much. Seeing what she went through and how we all grew as a family and how she raised us all and what we're all doing now, you know, prop, props to her. When did you first pick up a rugby ball? Probably a nine, I think. It took you a um, while. Yeah, it did, it did. I was like, yeah, this isn't for me. No. And then I started, because I didn't, I was the same size as everyone for a, a long yeah. time. And then I, I, I started growing quite a bit, which would have been around year eight, year nine. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Again, Whitchurch, is, it was a big rugby school. So like the teachers needed a few players to play in the D team. And they were like, Chris, what do you fancy? I was like, nah. And they were like, go on, just give it a go. Yeah, they could see you shooting yeah, out. They were like, yeah, come on, Chris. Just give it a go. We've got to talk about Whitchurch High School because, I mean, great choice of school, by the way, from your parents, because the alumni include, obviously, Sam Warburton, who we know is is, is a good pal of yours now, and um, Geraint Thomas, the, the cyclist, and, uh, oh, Gareth Bale as well. Um, and now yourself. Um, Steve Williams, I know he's had a huge impact on you. He's more of like a mentor to me now. You know, he's like a wise owl. He's been there, done that. Um, yeah, so we, we met when, which church has two sites, year seven, eight okay. and nine, and then year 10, 11 and sixth form. He, he worked in the 10, 11 and sixth form across the road. So when I was in year seven, eight and nine, I, I did know him and we never met. And okay. so that's probably why I didn't kick on earlier on. Yeah. We spent a lot of time together and Almost like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Karate Kid with um, yeah. Jaden Smith. Yeah, and yeah it, was, <laughs> it was a bit like that, the wax on, wax I off type. It was, it, was, it was a bit like that. So he kind um, of taught you everything you knew, know about rugby? Most, from, most yeah, things, yeah. yeah. And yeah. 
Um, it was not till I met him that I was like, um, he, if he sees that you've got potential, he really puts everything into you. Yeah. And even now he's calling me to be like, look, there's, there's this kid I see in school right now. He's got a lot of potential. Can you just speak to him? Yeah. Because he really has an eye for things like that. He he would have done a similar thing with Sam. Yeah. He would have called up Sam and said, can you have a word have with so and so? Check out Chris. So yeah, so that's where, that's how me and Sam kind of also came. Yeah. Can you remember with Sam? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was what, quite cool. What was he saying? What was he saying? <laughs> At the time, he just retired, Sam. So um, he came and obviously taught us a few of the stuff he knew and mm. he had a word and he was like, look, you could potentially have a future, etc." cetera. Mm. Like, there's a few photos of me and him of when he came to coach us in school once and me and him being next to each other. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like way smaller than him. And now I'm just like yeah, shot no, up past him. Yeah. Everyone else could see the potential. And I think you then maybe saw the potential when you went to South Africa with the school, um, which, you know, Steve pushed and pushed for you to go, go on and, and it ended up being a massive success. At that time, still resources were low, you know, we got a big family. And my mum said, look, I can only fork out so much. And, you know, I don't know whether he wants me to say it or not, but I'd like to thank him because he put his hand in his own back pocket and, yeah. and contributed to, to me going as well out, out, of his, out of his own money. And he went there and I had the best two weeks of my life. But you also, you know, with the school, visited a township there. You know, you obviously come in from Africa yourself. Was that sort of a bit of a full circle moment for you? seeing that yeah it was a very it was a very humbling experience and an eye opener as well almost like a, a reality check we went to a local a local rugby team yeah. we had quite a lot of stuff for them a lot of care a lot of boots you know anything mm -hmm. you didn't need we gave it to them and more and more kids just kept coming it was crazy yeah. i'm not joking i left that place with no socks no shoes and they were just they were like, can we have this? Can we have this? And like... Yeah, take everything. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you know, I, I suppose you can never truly repay him, but um, did you give him your first cap or was it the first shirt? Shirt, sure, the... yeah. Funny story, actually, the day before the game, I all my family wanted to come, friends, family, yeah. school teachers. And, You've got a big family. Yeah, a big <laughs> family. And I'm like, I've got to fork out quite a lot here. Because obviously <laughs> play, players get a certain amount of tickets okay. and anything past that, you've got, okay. you got to pay for them. Uh, one of the staff at Wales walked past and they were like, funny enough, a, um, a corporate business that, that was supposed to come to the, the game is just cancelled. So we've got like 30 spare tickets and they all came down and it was almost like a, I didn't even, I didn't pre premeditate that I was going to give him my jersey. I saw yeah. him and I was like, it only felt, it just only felt, felt right yeah, in that moment. It, it felt right. Let's go back to that, to that Wales debut. So how did you find out? I love these moments. Yeah, this, this was also another odd moment. <laughs> It was a day before my first Exeter University match. Okay. And I was sleep. I was sleep. Yeah, it was early in the morning. I was sleeping, and it was like, and I just heard the phone ring, and I, I look. It was like an un unregistered number, obviously, because yeah. I, I didn't know yeah, who Wayne yeah. Comeback was. And I answered, and he was like, um, in his Aussie accent, he was like, "Congratulations, you're on the team, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And I was like, "What's going? On? What's going on? <laughs> you, sorry, I'm about to go play. I'm about to go play Cardiff Uni in, in two hours. What, what do you mean I'm in the Welsh team?" Warren Gatland. He's a, you know, iconic figure in Welsh rugby. A hugely respected man within world rugby. What's it been like getting to know him? <clears throat> Funny story. Uh, <laughs> in about, I must have been seventeen. Mm. So probably like two year, two three years after I started playing rugby. Okay. In an interview, I said I'd love to play in the next World Cup. Um, and it was amazing to see what Wales did because Wales got yeah. quite far. And fast forward, here we are. I mean, Warren's Gat Gatlin's team potentially with the opportunity to play in, in the World Cup with providing everything goes goes all right for me is is quite surreal. Yeah. So look, we're sitting here, and say we're here in two years' time. What would you like to be talking about? Hopefully Success. Wales winning a Six Nations. <laughs> I, want to, I would also like to win a trophy with, um, with Exeter Chiefs. Yeah. You know, one of the main um, reasons I also signed at Exeter because from the outside, you could see that they were winners. You know, like mm -hmm. they won a few stuff back to back and then they won the double, they won Europe and Prem and that was almost something I wanted to be a part of. So winning a trophy or some form of big tournament is definitely, definitely within, within my goals.